All right, a fun one here. Term limits. I love this talk. Now, if you've seen the term limit pledge that's out there, you'll notice that it's something that I don't necessarily agree with, and I have my own plan for term limits. Now, let me explain that very briefly. The term limit pledge that's out there that a lot of candidates and politicians are signing says that members of Congress should get six years and members in the Senate should get 12 years. Now, the reason I don't agree with that is one, I think you're handicapping leadership by keeping the House of Representatives at six years. Two, I don't believe it's fair to have one chamber of the House treated differently than the other chamber. And three, I think there's likely a 90 to 95 percent chance that that legislation is dead on arrival. And for that reason, I don't want to put my name on something that I don't believe can actually get done. Part of my platform for the Republican Party not only is selling solutions, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. We need to under-promise and over-deliver. We need to promise and campaign on things that have a high likelihood of succeeding. Because what good is campaigning on something if you can't actually get it done? And for that reason, I have my own solution for term limits. So let's get into that. Number one, 18 years. That treats the House and the Senate equally. That would give three terms for the Senate, nine terms for the House. And what that does is it allows for growth and leadership continuity while preventing the elected officials from remaining in power longer than desired. I think if we come in too stringent with term limits of one or two terms, I think it's going to be DOA. I think you're going to hurt the talent pool for higher level offices, and I think it's a very, very low likelihood that members of Congress would actually vote for a six or maybe even a 12-year term limit. Now, if I get to Congress and that legislation gets in front of my desk, will I sign it? Absolutely. However, I think it's unlikely to actually succeed, which is why I think if we're going to under-promise and over-deliver, we go with an approach that is much more likely to succeed. We explain the rationale. We explain the trade-offs. We get stakeholders to buy in to what we're doing. We sell the solution, and then we go be successful, right? That's what engineers do. That's how we get the military to buy into our technical solutions. That's exactly what Congress is missing today. Now, as far as age limits go, I don't personally believe that age limits will ever be successful. I think it will be viewed as highly discriminatory. I think it's going to be very subjective. Therefore, it's going to be hard to argue for what you believe in, whether or not you tie it to 65, 70, 75, 80. Maybe you tie it to the average life expectancy and make it go up or down from there. Either way, I don't think that's going to be likely, so it's not something that I necessarily advocate for. I care more about term limits. Now. For the Congressional Pension Fund, if you don't know right now, you are eligible for a pension in Congress if you serve at least five years. Now, I think that's a little unfair given the fact that somehow they're all multimillionaires. So what I would prefer to do is actually take that pension fund and either remove it altogether or tie it to the highest amount of term limits we pass. So if we are successful in getting term limits passed at 12 years, 18 years, 24 years, some division of six, right, so that it's equal with the Senate and the House. I think you tie it to the maximum amount of years that you can be in Congress. That way you're incentivizing and rewarding the successful politicians who are able to consistently win re-elections. And the only reason they deserve to get that pension is because they're getting kicked out of their job through no fault of their own. Now, again, the counter argument right there, I could easily be persuaded to cut that all together. I'm not so sure they would vote on it. I don't think, again, it has a high likelihood of succeeding. But at the same time, we could always get rid of it. I somehow, you know, I, they're obviously all multi-millionaires anyways, so I don't know why they need a pension. And also right there, the subjective nature of this is the fact that I could easily be convinced to make it 12, whether it's 18, whether it's 24. There has to be some medium where we the people win, where we constrain the amount of time that they're allowed to be in Congress, balancing the trade-offs with executive level leadership and experience, but also making sure that they can't stay there for 40 or 50 years, right? There has to be a sweet spot in the middle, and this is why I propose what I propose.